Hi, I'm Amber Marsala with SCN Corporate Connect. We're here today in San Francisco at the Cryptocurrency and its Influence on Private and Family Office Wealth event. I'm here now with Doug Alanoff. So Doug, talk to us about what you do. Oh, well, thanks, Amber. I appreciate being here. Uh, I'm a securities lawyer by training. Uh, I am a managing partner of a law firm in New York City of 80 lawyers, and we have 50 securities lawyers, and we help entrepreneurs get funding for their various business opportunities. Uh, we were second in the country last year of all US-based law firms. Uh, we uh, did two and a half billion dollars of financings, but we also work with a lot of venture sort of uh, backed opportunities and entrepreneurs looking to raise one, uh, money one way or another through alternate finance programs that we've been involved with. Okay, so now I know that you have kind of a different viewpoint on ICOs. Can you talk about that? Yes, I should preface it by saying that uh, our law firm was the leading law firm in the crowdfunding space. Okay. So when there weren't crowdfunding rules back in 2012 when President Obama passed the Jobs Act, which enabled the uh, crowdfunding rules, our law firm took the leadership position in championing the rights of entrepreneurs and investors to invest small sums of money online uh, and to do it in a lawful way after working with the federal and state and international regulators to enable that all to happen. It was quite revolutionary and disruptive, which brings us to the ICO conversation, right. which is an unusual position for me to be in, where I took issue with how these companies uh, or entrepreneurs were funding their distributed ledger technology opportunities with white papers and ICOs. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we analyzed that program very, very carefully and came to the conclusion that the legal analysis that had been undertaken, we were not comfortable with. And so for a firm that prides itself on going headlong into new programs, we've sat on the sidelines for the last 18 months. Wow. So as you said, you're not the most popular guy in, in the room. Which again is not what my usual position is, because yeah. usually we're facilitating entrepreneurs raising right. money. Uh, I think that it's easier for me now because I was speculating, having read the legal analysis for so long, that I didn't agree with what was being told to entrepreneurs. And now the SEC, the state regulators have taken an affirmative action and made it very clear that, uh, and I'm not glad about being right here and no schoidenfreude, uh, but it turns out that the, uh, the regulators do agree with my analysis and consequently, a lot of ICO issuers are in a very uncomfortable position and being challenged and subpoenas have been issued. Okay, well, so you're really not wrong. I mean, people shouldn't be feeling the way they do. Sometimes you can be right and uh, <laughs> it, it's not pro-entrepreneur because right. entrepreneurs want to find ways to raise money for their opportunities. They believed uh, that this was easy money. Right. And unfortunately, when you want to raise money from less wealthy investors, not only in the United States, but elsewhere in the world. Uh, that's why regulations exist. Right. We don't want to see uh, individuals lose mo more money than they're capable of losing and become wards of the state. Right. And uh, that's why the ro rules exist. And unfortunately, my take again, is that what has happened uh, fairly pervasively in the ICO industry is a fairly cynical uh, obfuscation of those rules. Mm. I'm sorry to hear that. So. Yeah, I understand. So that's why I'm not the most popular person I in the room it. today. Yeah. <laughs> but I do, uh, I have been down to the SEC. Okay. Uh, and I'm trying to find solutions to some of these problems. Good for you. I've funded a new initiative to help with one aspect of it, which I won't go into because it's really getting into the weeds. Yeah. Uh, but I'm here because uh, I feel it is important for people to hear this, mm -hmm. uh, to be more careful going forward, but at the same time to be a productive member of this community. And I have uh, articles online going back to May of last year saying, uh, be careful. Wow. And now I want to uh, help entrepreneurs who I think were really innocent entrepreneurs who are going to learn a lot about, unfortunately, enforcement actions. And we want to work with the SEC and the industry to help people have a better way forward so they can go back to funding these interesting distributed uh, technologies and um, raising money. Well, that sounds great. I mean, best of luck to you with that. Well, thank you. You're I welcome. appreciate it. And so what do you think about this event? Uh, I always love being in Northern California. Uh, and this event so far has been terrific, and it's in front of a lot of uh, family offices mm -hmm. who I think are trying to figure out ways to invest in uh, 
cryptocurrencies, blockchain in particular, which is the underlying technology for all of this. Uh, and so um, I think it's really worthwhile and I'm excited to be here. Well, that's great. Well, we're so happy to have you and thank you for speaking with us. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm Amber Marcella and you're watching SCN Corporate Connect.